Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by REC Comics and Collectibles. I am your host, Roman Chavez, and with me, as always, Eric Icarus. Eric, my friend in this mm-hmm. world, yes, that we love so dearly, this uh-huh. comic book nerd world, where at any, you can look left, you can look right, you can look up, you can look down, we get superhero stuff. We yeah. get it in print, we get it on the big screen, we got it on the little screen, got it on your phone, you got it everywhere. That's right. Are you experiencing any superhero fatigue? You know, uh, to be completely honest, um, yes and no. Yes and no? Okay. You know, as far as the movies are concerned, no. Not by any means. And, and of course, I'm mainly talking MCU. Sure, sure. You know, um, as far as DC is concerned, it, it's, I feel like it's a little tiresome. Yeah. I'm getting tired of seeing disappointing movies. And granted, yeah, they have two really good ones. Yeah. And, a couple okay ones, yeah. you know? It's like it's like being a child of divorce, and you keep waiting for your dad to pick you up for the big game, and then he calls you, like, right before, he's like, hey, buddy, I'm not going to be able to come out this weekend, all right? And, and then, like, Aquaman is that awesome bike he gets you on Christmas. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, he makes up for it with the big gift, yeah. and it's supposed to be this salve, but... Yeah, no, I, I hear you, I hear well, you. Um, as far as the, uh, yes, it's the, the, the TV. TV yeah. division. TV, you know, okay. Um, being a uh, huge fan of the um, Netflix Marvel Universe, uh-huh. um, you know, to be perfectly honest, I, I, I love Daredevil. Uh-huh. All three seasons, amazing. Uh, Jessica Jones, season one, yeah. probably right there with Daredevil. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, like at, when Daredevil season one came out and then Jessica Jones season one came out, I actually like the story of right. Jessica what, Jones better. You're telling me that. Yeah. And, and it's hard to argue that. Yeah. Like really as a is. whole, Daredevil season one is fantastic. Sure. It's got the action, it's got the story, it's got the great character development. Right. But I loved Kilgrave. Oh, man. I loved just the layer of crazy that was going on. Totally. And then, and, and then um, you know, Luke Cage was okay. And let's not talk about Iron Fist. And <laughs> Punisher was pretty good. Yeah. But honestly... Just, I didn't get through most of the second seasons on any of the other ones. Neither did I. I uh, um, I got a little burnt out. It, it seemed like they were just retreading old ground on every single one of those. It didn't feel like a new... Aside Daredevil. S- yeah. <laughs> it didn't feel like a new season of a show. It felt like the continuation of the slow bits from the previous right. seasons. Um, yeah, I didn't finish Luke Cage season two Jessica Jones season two, Punisher season two. The only one I've watched all of is Daredevil. Oh, right. And you know there was even part, there was parts of season two I didn't really care for. I didn't like the Electra stuff at all. Right. Um, yeah, you, I remember I was talking about that. And, um, yeah, I don't. I, I wish that I you know I champion a lot of those shows. Yeah. But, you know uh, we were discussing this and looking back on it, it's. A lot of it is just, it doesn't hold up. Like we said, it's a lot of the pacing issues. Yes. And it makes you not want to come back and rewatch it. Yeah. There's not a lot of rewatch value on those TV shows, on the uh, Netflix MCU stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, as far as the, the DC TV stuff, I'm not well enamored in it. I don't yeah. know a lot about it. So e- I tried getting into Gotham, but it wasn't. The Gotham was bad. I, don't, I like the first season a lot. Right. But right off the bat in the second season, they lost me, and then they never got me back, and then I would pop in every now and again, sure. and I just didn't care. Right. I just didn't care. You know, the, for the MCU, you know, I get so excited for the films that kind of the in-between it gets filled with, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. Which is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is great. Right. Which I, I love The few Agents episodes I've seen are great. I love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm a few episodes it. back this season, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed that show. But when it comes to the DC stuff, um, you know, with the same thing as the MCU stuff on Netflix... It's a. I think it's an issue of like less is more. Sure. And you know when you when the CW shows there are twenty two oh, episodes. Yeah. And there's going to be some interesting stuff in there, but it's so much, and then there's so many misses. Right. There's a lot of swings and a lot of misses. There you go. And it just I don't know. Like I didn't. Fin- this is the first time I didn't finish any of the CW shows from last season. Wow. <laughs> not even Arrow. Not even Arrow, which is the one I like the most. Yeah. Um, and. You know, it was just like, like, just the same thing, disappointing dad thing, where yeah. it just like kept promising and it just wasn't. There was no payoff in it. You know, I feel like the DC shows, like they were like throwing out shows left and right. We got that um, Supergirl and then uh, World's Finest, am I? Um, it was called uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow, sorry. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, um, which which had a touch like all their shows have so much promise because right. the actors are pretty solid. Sure, but they just like they get so enamored with who's dating who. Uh, so or, it's turning into like a, a, a like a teenage drama, like a real CW show. Yeah, kinda. yeah. It was funny because when Supergirl came out, it was on NBC at first, right. and I and I wasn't gonna watch it. Okay, because uh, I was like, oh, NBC's gonna gonna really you know just tap into the girl stuff sure. and it's just gonna be overly girly right. and that's hands down the best season of Supergirl is what was on really NBC. was okay because if like after the first episode like the first episode was kind of was was sure yeah was how I thought it was going to be but then immediately they started just doing deep cuts we had tons of different characters like deep comic book things like the creators and writers of this show really leaned into we've got to get people in on this show let's show them the Legion of Superheroes. Let's show them Black Mercy. Let's show them Martian Manhunter. Oh, wow. You know, they did so many really, really interesting characters. And then it moves over to the CW and it immediately becomes more campy. Oh. And it was super, super irritating. God. With those shows, too, I think what they suffer from is regime changes. Sure. For Stephen DeKnight leaves Daredevil, Daredevil after season one. Right. You know, and then, you know, they, they keep on some of the writers, but those writers' rooms just kind of changed, so the directions changed. Yeah. And unfortunately for the CW shows, there was a guy by the name of Andrew Kreisberg who was kind of... Greg Berlanti is the showrunner, like right. the, the producer for the CW shows, but the other side of the coin was this guy, Andrew Kreisberg, who is... A comic book encyclopedia. Wow. He knows a lot about comics. And he got me too. He was inappropriate on oh, set, made some inappropriate no. comments, and they ousted him. And there's a definite and immediate loss of comic book continuity when he leaves. Sure. And I'm not saying, you know, nothing has come out and they said, oh yeah, Andrew's the one who, who finalized everything, but... There was definitely a change in the years. substance was it not lost there. Yeah, and then it became about who is dating whom, right? You know, and it was Which, just you know, there. There can be gold there. There can be. But yeah, I there, there is interesting stories to tell. But if you're going to just tell, like, if you're not going to go all the way with it, and you're just going to be like, "Oh, Supergirl is going on a date this week. Yeah. Let's see what kind of shenanigans they get in." Yeah. Instead of like, would it really feels like the date a superhero? Yeah, like how how tiring it would be. And how hard it would be, you know? How like, scary it would how be. How scary, yeah. yeah. What, what, let's go all the way with uh -huh. it. And I think that's why it doesn't hold our attention. Mm -hmm. Because it, you're, not, you're not giving us anything really to hold on to. It's like, wow, there's nothing here. As were the movies, like, oh, wow. We're, they're teasing us with this. Mm -hmm. let's, I'm excited again. I'm rejuvenated to watch these MCU movies. You know, even with Aquaman. Yeah. You know, you... Um, I remember kind of being over the DCU. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden seeing the trailer for Aquaman, kind of rolling my eyes. Then I see Black Manta. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm in. You got me back, DCU. <laughs> you got me back. And that's, and that's kind of what was so cool. When the CW shows are on, when they're really uh, knocking it out of the park, is when they're showing us new characters. I mean, in Flash, we have Gorilla Grodd. We've oh, got wow. King Shark. We've got... We've had Captain Cold, Heat Wave. Like, we've had this pantheon of Flash villains and just comic book, DC comic book characters that are really cool. But then it's like, like even even Captain Cold, like, on an alternate Earth, the, the actor who plays him, and I, his, his name escapes me right now, um, he's homosexual in real life. Uh -huh. So, like, on this other Earth, he's like a homosexual Captain Cold. And okay. while, while that can be interesting, sure. if there was no... If I didn't know who was dating anybody, mm -hmm. I wouldn't care. Sure. I wouldn't care. Because th there was a point in the end of season two, beginning of season three of Supergirl, where literally, because, you know, all of these shows are built off ensembles. Right. And literally everybody was having, like, couple problems. Oh, oh like a tryst. Yeah. With just like, oh, okay. It's hard, and oh, so they oh. don't get me, and I'm out there saving, you know, it's just like, yeah. oh my God, shut up. Yeah, and it just, it just pulled, you know, if. <laughs> If 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 superheroes struggle with with relationships, the same if not worse than normal people, like don't sign me up to be a superhero. Yeah, then, for you sure, know? it's like you know you guys gotta figure this out. Exactly, you which again, this out. I mean, that can be cool. Yeah, but you know if you're, I, I'm watching these people to get away from my own life. Why? Yeah, I, you, these people are so. You know, I'm borrowing a quote from Frank Miller. These people are operatic in their combat. Why wouldn't they be operatic in their romantic life? Interesting. Why not be? Why not just go yeah. crazy with it? You know. Um, I mean, I, I feel like that's what maybe Daredevil did really well. And I mean, he didn't care for the Electra stuff, uh -huh. but 
You gotta admit, there was some chemistry there. There was when chemistry. Those two were on. They were on. Yes, there was chemistry and there was conflict there. And the thing is, is that it wasn't even trying to work out. It was like, hey, like I've got to help you, yeah. but you won't even help yourself. Exactly. And you know, the, the the relationship drama there didn't bother me at all, to be honest with you. Um, some of the Jessica Jones, Luke Cage stuff was kind of meh, but right for the most part. The 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 relationship relationships doesn't bother me there in the in the MCU Netflix shows. Right. I feel like they did it really well. I mean, how stoked were you when you saw Luke Cage in the first season of Jessica Jones? Like, wow. Yeah. Like that. That's crazy. That I can't. Was... Believe, I can't believe this is happening. Um, for those of you out there who don't know, they actually date in in the married married, married, married. comic have a daughter. Yeah. So it, for someone for people like uh, Roman and myself, that that's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, that shows, like, attention to detail from the writers, and they actually care about the material. And when they care, it makes you care. Yes. You know, and I feel like the second season of Jessica Jones, they, they were just kind of like, oh, this worked, let's do it again. Yeah. Oh, this didn't work, let's do this again. Yeah. <laughs> we can make it work. We can make know? it work. And uh, let's just not even talk about Iron Fist. Yeah, man. I mean, me and you sat through that. I believe you were the most excited for this. Oh, yeah. I was more excited for Iron Fist than the, I was for Daredevil. You were. You were. Uh, I'm more of an Iron Fist guy than the yeah. Daredevil guy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why The Devil Inside It Out is one of my favorite De Daredevil stories with Iron Fist. Hey, there's spoilers. Okay, spoilers. Three, two, one. Iron Fist filling in for Matt as Daredevil while Matt's in prison. Which is insane. It's, it's an insane reveal. And Ed Brubaker. Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction. It's a fantastic story, but I digress, as always. Yeah. Um, what? Okay. From the MCU shows. Yeah. Besides from Daredevil, what would you like to see them take another bite at? It, it, on Disney Plus, they get to do it. Iron Fist. Okay, yeah. Oh, Agreed. Iron Fist. Agreed. Hands Agreed. down. Because I feel like the other characters, they did them justice. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, like, um, it wasn't bad because of the actors. Right. Whereas Iron Fist was... Yeah. I'm sorry, Finn Jones. I you just, I just didn't believe you as Danny Rand. Yeah, I, just didn't believe I don't you. see it. Yeah. I didn't see it. Um, I remember seeing some publicity photos. And be like, oh, God, this yeah, can work. Sure, and then we, sure. Remember we watched the first episode, like... Okay. Yeah. We were like, this can happen. Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were trying really to pulling for it. Trying to get each other going. Exactly. For this one, you know. And then it just turned into me and you just roasting it. <sighs> we got to the fifth episode, like, okay. Yeah. For, the, for the remainder twelve <laughs> episodes. Your gloves are like, off. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and uh, and I want to watch season two because I do know that they talk about some of the uh, Iron Fist stuff that I really enjoy. Yeah, they do, and they do. And but it's just, actually way better. Yeah. The first season, the fighting's better. Yeah, and then to to Finn Jones's credit, he I guess he only had like a month to prep, whereas yeah. you know uh, Charlie Cox had like six months to get in shape and learn how to fight. But did Finn Jones only have four weeks to learn how to act, or, <laughs> or what, what was? <laughs> He's like, I, I got to understand this character more. Yeah, yeah. I got to go live in the mountains. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, for me, yes. If they could get another shot, I would love it to be Iron Fist, and it would rejuvenate my uh, love for the, the the character. Yeah. You know, because it kind of made me not like Iron Fist. It, it did kind of affect me. I stopped reading Iron Fist around the same time as well. And yeah. I, I don't know. They, 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 it was bleeding over. You had to give me the comics. last Iron Fist story to like. Just read yeah, this. You'll yeah. feel better. This is a great story again. I believe Matt Fraction and Brew Baker yeah, again. Yep. And they just they they know what to do with some with some kung fu stories. There you, you know. Um, I mean, there was there. I feel like there was a missed opportunity. You telling me in a DC one, uh -huh. but Constantine. Oh my gosh! You dude. said that was a huge missed opportunity. The Constantine TV show that they did, I believe it was on Fox. It might have been on NBC. First four episodes are hot garbage they're really not, yeah they're not very good okay you like the actor he's ch kind of charming in a, okay. in, a, in a in a jerk way sure but they basically announced hey we're not going to do a second season and then they shortened season one so it only went 13 episodes oh wow so then those final episodes were excellent oh. they were excellent and that actor was so good and i was like man this guy deserved a better shake well lo and behold he shows up in arrow that's right and it's really cool. Like, he, he was underutilized in the Arrow episode, but it was cool to see that guy back sure. as that actor. Totally. And, okay, but then they added him to Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, cool. And it just sucked. Oh, It no. just wasn't, yeah. They just, like, don't know what they want to do. For sure. You know, like, the whole the whole idea of Legends of Tomorrow is that, you know, they've built these ensemble casts on the other, on the main shows, 
and guys rotate in and out. And it's a smart idea because they would kind of rotate in and out to Legends. Oh. So Kid Flash was in Legends, and White Canary was in Legends. Okay. And yeah, it was just like people that we knew. That's very interesting. And it's like, okay, we don't have anything for you in Arrow, but... Let's Come put you in here. Legends. We can do something in Legends. Yeah. The Adam, he started in Arrow, and then he, he was he was a part of Legends the whole time. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, and it was Brandon Routh. Oh. Yeah, he played, uh, he played uh, the go. Adam. That's yeah. awesome. But they basically made him Iron Man. Like, he shrinks, but he also has, like, a fighting, like, a suit. <laughs> like, a fighting suit. It was... Yeah, they were really they were really grasping at straws. And Brandon Routh's not the best actor, but he's yeah. charming. He's okay. handsome. Yeah, you know? he's, there you go. And it was nice to see him get a get a, another shake at the DC tree as well. <laughs> yeah, you know? I guess they kind of owed it to him. Yeah, but, yeah, and and he was a fan favorite for a little while, but sure. they just went the wayside. Like right. they just didn't know what they want to do again. And on the uh, Gregory Berlanti is homosexual, the, sure. the, the, the showrunner. So yeah. there's a lot of homosexuality in the shows. Which is fine, sure. but it gets overemphasized and then it and overshadows. The yes. And that's not even just homosexuality. When you overemphasize relationship drama, yes. that is the issue. Yeah. So my same issue with Buffy. I loved uh, uh, Willow and Tara's sure. uh, relationship. But then they just pushed it in your face. I see. I times. never felt that way. A lot of people There was like did. a couple of times yeah. when a couple of episodes like, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I got more tired with Buffy's drama. <laughs> Me you too. Know, Buffy's the relationship fair, drama. No, every, I feel yeah. like there was every character in there their relationship, even um, Seth Green's werewolf yeah, yeah. nonsense got mm-hmm. pushed in your mm-hmm. face a lot. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, got it. Yeah, like I think Joss and his crew did such a, I'm always I'm always just, you know, stroking Joss Whedon's ego. It, it, me too. Um, I love it. I feel like Joss and his crew, they did a really good job, especially like when we were young in the 90s and yeah. then the early 2000s. It's like homosexuality was becoming a more prominent, you know, thing in the mainstream. Sure. Well, and like we learned how to deal with it with Buffy. Sure. You know, like it was just like, like oh, we saw somebody struggle with with who they were and all that stuff, right. and it just made a lot of sense. Yet again, I digress. The thi- the problem with the TV shows mm-hmm. is frequency. I was getting ready to say, and I feel like there are people who are who are tired of comic book movies, but you know, Marvel will do three a year. DC will attempt one or two, um, and then you you get the the, the odds and ends, the three hundreds, right. the uh, Sin Cities, and, and the like, um, the Watchmen's, but. I don't feel like the frequency is there. I mean, how many kids' movies come out a year? For sure. How many horror movies come out a year? You right. know, it's... At, but where where my... You, you guys lost me? Is Your it TV? threshold is the yeah. TV. Yeah. Would you say there's an expiration date on these TV shows? Yes. And the problem is, is they don't have any idea that that's going to happen to them. Sure. They don't have an end game. Ha <laughs> ha. <And>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't have it in mind when they're writing these shows. Arrow was the strongest one, and it has just floundered in the water for, for sure. the last couple of years, yeah. you know? And then finally, they're canceling it, right? but they're going to give it a 10-episode, which it's usually 22 episodes, oh, 21, wow. something like that. They're going to give it a 10-episode end, and I bet you it's going to be an amazing 10 episodes sure. because they know, and they have to put it in there. Or it's going to be Game of Thrones, and they're just going to screw us over and everything. Yeah. Um, I but, mean, I was getting ready to say, should should these some of these TV shows or all of them have, like, okay, you've got five seasons. Yeah. That is it. You tell your story of five seasons, yeah, and that's it. And if, if the fans want more, then that's negotiable. Yeah. yeah, we can figure that out in season four. Yeah, we'll ca- cross that bridge. Yes. But I feel like you tell your whole story in five seasons at I, most. I, at I most. kind of agree with you. I do I kind mean, of agree with would you. Would you say consistently Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been the best? Yeah, and part of me wonders, again, from J- Joss's brother is the, is the showrunner. That's right. His yeah. brother and uh, sister-in-law, the showrunners for that. And... They never get renewed until like right it's before the last, last episode, minute, or right. or a couple weeks after. Wow. So they're always swinging for the fence. They're always leaving everything out there. Wow. And um, I got. I'm not gonna lie to you. I ha- this season has not been as strong, and they've already been renewed for the following season. That doesn't help me. Sure. Um, but it was for my money the best comic book show on TV is Agents of Shield. Right. I remember you telling me about this was probably right when Agents of Shield came out. You were, you, you were so excited because you're like, oh, it was so cool because I'm getting my comic book movies. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is tying into it. Then so that <coughs> ends, and then I get um, Agent Carter. Oh, man, that like, was super fun. You had such fun. this cool little... This good, like, rotation. Rotation. Of, of, of MCU stuff. Yeah. Because every, almost every character in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is compelling. Right. They, you know, again, it's ensemble and it works really well. Yeah. Um, and Coulson, Agent, baby. And Coulson, man. I really want them to acknowledge Coulson back in the movie <laughs> universe. And we got young Coulson, which was cool, sure. and Captain yeah. Marvel. But I really would like 
It, there was no reason he Coulson wasn't at Tony's funeral. For sure. It's upsetting. Right. <laughs> but you said at this point he's in the future. Yeah. It might have been. Yeah, he might have been. I don't know. I need I need to catch up because they are in current times now. So I wonder. I'm not sure if if they if they dealt with the end game stuff. Like sure. you said, I'm a few episodes back. Right. But I think that it's one of those things where where less is more, and you know. CW had a Black Lightning show that I couldn't, that I never even oh, started. Oh man, I forgot. And about that, it's dude. done, or it's about to be done. But it just, you know, in any given week, you can have Arrow, Supergirl, Flash, Legends, Legends, uh, Black, uh, Black Lightning, Constantine, um, Constant. You know, and it's just, it's just a lot. It's, and it's... I, w- I would kill to have Legends have been a summer show sure. for thirteen weeks. Black Lightning be a summer show for 13 weeks. They introduced Batwoman. We're going to be getting a Batwoman show in the fall or spring. What? And it's Ruby Rose. And I just don't care. See, that's what I... See, I just don't care. This is where the fatigue comes yes. in. Is it a lack of interest because the rest of the content isn't good? Or yeah. is it because I'm just kind of over yeah. these TV shows? And then we know that Bruce Wayne exists in this world. And we know that Bruce Wayne is gone. And at any time that Bruce Wayne is like gone in a TV show, it's always like some... Like he's like... Finding himself or something like that. <laughs> Same thing happened. In, they did a show, Birds of Prey, in the early two thousands, late nineties. Oh my god, they and did. It, yeah, and it was literally like Catwoman dies, so Bruce just leaves Gotham. And it's like, oh, so that's how okay. they explain him not there. Basically, yeah. Joker and, and Bruce had their last fight. Joker died that night, and then Bruce left. Did we get to see this fight? Just like shaky cam no, garbage. No. I yeah. again, I think it's down to the, the the substance. Yeah, I think DC is dumping so much, so many shows. Yeah, and you like you said, they don't space it. No, it's like oh, here you go. They've All done once. They've done three crossovers, which were the things I was looking so forward to. Sure. on the CW. Yeah, the first one was garbage. The Supergirl tie-in right, right, right. was literally like recapped. It was literally the end of the Supergirl episode, and the Flash shows up like, "Hey, we need your help!" And then, like, the episode of Flash opens up with that scene, so you didn't even need it in the Supergirl oh episode. Oh my god! And it wasn't very good. <sighs> and then the second season, they yeah. did um, Crisis on Earth X. Oh, cool! Awesome. So Earth X is where the Nazis have won. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You're telling me yeah. about this. And it was yeah. awesome. And actually, everything kind of like bled into each other and it made a lot more sense sure. and it was this big you know we got our our avengers moment where it's literally a line of like 40 heroes that's so awesome like going to fight but then the fight was just okay yeah. and, and, and i and i i wish that they would have taken some more liberties but it was fun sure and then the third one i don't even remember what happened i, wow. don't, I could right now gun to my head i couldn't even tell you what happened in this last oh. crossover i don't remember Jeez. So, you know, they have this opportunity to, to you know, at least they can knock the crossovers out of... No, nope, not even. You know, and, and, and also, MCU can't do it. Look at Defenders. Yeah. That was so anticipated. Yeah. We were over the moon for it, and then it just was... Pieces of it were okay. Yeah. And the, and but that, just a few pieces. Like, yeah. And what a waste of Sigourney Weaver in the MCU. Yes. What a waste. Huge waste. You know, we needed to have her be a little bit more BA. We needed to have... They um, should have just kept it Gao. Yeah, and especially if Gao is like afraid of her. Exactly. Like we need we need her to be ruthless, and she just really wasn't. Was it? She had like a small hand heavy, and I get it. So Rennie Weaver's a little bit older. Sure, but you're telling so me Gao, and she was terrifying. Yes, yes. Is she yeah. Gao Gao terrified me far more than Sigourney. Exactly. Weaver. And it would have been nice to see Sigourney show up elsewhere. There you go. Except in just the Defenders. Exactly. Because that whole idea of like the fingers of the hand. Which was so cool. So smart. Exactly. And it just... They just, just wasted it. Yeah. It was, just it was, wasted it. was weak. It. it was so weak. Yeah. And for me, that that was the beginning of the end of my re- love relationship with the Netflix yeah. MCU. Was the Defenders. Yeah. And after that, it was kind of like... Yeah. Luckily, Daredevil Season 3 was amazing. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Daredevil Season 3 was really good. It ended on a high note. Still and not enough bullseye. No, no. And we don't get bullseye in the costume. Nope. And so, we never will. And we never will. And that guy, that guy was perfect. pretty cool. Yeah, he was, he was awesome. pretty cool. He was Played unsettling. It. He yeah. was unsettling. Played it perfect. He was the right. step under Jared Leto's Joker. There you go. Where he was like weird and yeah. sociopath sure. and that. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I, you had been watching these shows more than me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... I, I don't know how you kept up with it for so long. Just love of the game, man. You know, right. you got to. Right. Sometimes you got to suffer through. Just, it's the same thing with comics. I mean, X Men. X Men will have you know had like a twenty year run of just amazing books, and then it was on like a twelve or fifteen year run before it got good again, Jeez. where it just wasn't good. 
You know, like comics are like this. Okay. Where I drop comics a lot where I'm just like, all right, I'm about to pick up Daredevil again because something big's about to happen. Oh, wow. Okay. Week. Supposedly a new Daredevil. We'll probably oh. talk about that later. Hey, yeah. nice. Um, but you, you told me you haven't read Daredevil in years. Um, uh, not more than a, a, a six issue story at a time. I'll give it six. I'm like, all right. I remember you telling me like, Daredevil would be great if it was just they did like an annual, a yes, six, six issue annual yeah. every year. Six issue. Same thing with Punisher. Right. Again, less is more. Yep. But some but characters they just they just need it. Yeah. Like you said, less is more. Yeah. You know, it's hard to. So many story. There's only so many stories you can tell with those kind of characters. Yeah. To where you know, I want to, I want to miss Daredevil. Right. I want to be excited that Daredevil's coming back. You know. Uh, and yeah, they just they never really know what they want to do. And don't get me wrong, they do some cool stuff. Sure. Shadowlands was interesting. Yeah, and yeah. Devil Inside Out, of course. And, but the yeah, just the frequency is is the big issue. DC comes up to you and says, "Eric, uh-huh. we want to do a TV show. Mm-hmm. What's the character you want to see on, on TV?" Oh, that is that is an awesome question. And you know what? They did it. And I heard it's not good. Swamp Thing. Oh, man, I would yeah. really, I would really like Swamp Thing to have a fair shake, man. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, there's a lot of cool things you could do with it, man. Yeah. You know, um, I think a lot of people would say, "Oh, give me Batman," but you, mm-hmm. they, they've done that, and it, it didn't work. But be, because because they keep trying to give us Batman without giving us Batman. There you go. Right. You know, Gotham is was supposed to be mostly about Gordon and all that stuff. But then it definitely shifted into young Bruce Wayne. And the thing the the, the thing that's good about Bruce Wayne, I want to see the globe trotting. There you go. We don't get that. Like right. if you you could do a ten year show of Bruce globe trotting and learning these skills. Right. Maybe even make, committing some serious crimes and having to like deal with it. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um. But so Swamp Thing. Yeah, I would be down with some. Uh, I think that is something that could be, I and mean, I think they've actually done a different Swamp. Yeah, thing this is the third time. Third we've time because we've done two live action and we had a cartoon. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. And you know, I'm trying to think of a really cool street hero that I think that would that could do some justice on TV. Yeah. Uh, that pun definitely intended. <laughs> TV uh, justice. <laughs> who who would you want to see? For me, for um. For DC, I think I'd like to see uh, Booster Gold. Interesting. Um, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle would be what, kind of fun. Was it Booster Gold in, in, in Arrow or, or Flash or something? I feel like they, they, he's... I think they showed him somewhere. He was definitely in Smallville. Oh, Smallville! Yeah, he, That's was, right. he was in Smallville. That's what I was thinking. And, you know, his, his kind of story is, is interesting where he's, a, he's basically a janitor in the Flash Museum or in the Superhero Museum right. in the future. Yeah. He gets a, a Legion ring... Uh, gets a little bit of tech, and then uh, uses the time machine to come back to like make his own mark on like being a hero. Right, and, and that's uh, so cool. And te- uh, and then Ted Cord, which they did talk about Cord Industries a few times in in Arrow. Um, he gets this magical scarab and is never able to use it. Okay. It was, it was gifted to him by the by the original Blue Beetle. It gave him enhanced abilities sure. and all that stuff, sure. but he was ever, never able to use it. Wow! Uh, so he's a, a low level Tony Stark, you know, oh, uh, more of a more of a pim. There you go. And so he creates weapons. He's got yeah. a ship, very very akin to like Night Owl and, and oh, stuff like. Okay. He's an old Charlton comic, actually. Well, there you go. You know, he's an old Charlton comic, which is you know what they base the Watchmen people right. off of and everything. So um, so they have this like kind of unlikely friendship. And it always made for really good stories. Um, in Infinite Crisis, the kind of death of Ted Cord, spoiler, um, was such a uh, like you didn't appreciate Ted Cord until he was gone. Until he's gone. Until he was, and you're like, oh man, I wasted it. I didn't get to enjoy this like friendship like <laughs> right, I should have. Right. So I'd like to see that because you could do it low low power. You could, you could do oh, it low yeah. power, and it could be a buddy comp, there comp you go, thing. Which, you know, oh, man. So that that would have been cool. so on board. Yeah, for that, that would have been cool. Um, Man, well, I, we can come back to you for the DC. Uh, and you'd be easier for the Marvel stuff. Oh, for sure. Marvel TV show, they they are gonna give you a budget and they say make hey, get this made. What do you get, make? Get this made. Yeah. Man. And not Daredevil season four. Of course, okay. I, I want to do Ghost Rider and do it right. <sighs> well, we're gonna get one on Disney. We Disney are. Plus is getting a Ghost Rider. It's not going to be Johnny or Dan, Danny, but it's going to be oh my god, what this is Ramon something. The, the Mexican Ghost yeah, Rider yeah, with, yeah, the, with yeah. the low rider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he in Agents of he S.H.I.E.L.D.? He was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was very interesting. They did a good job. Good yeah. effects. 
Um, I liked it. They were kind of passing around the spirit of vengeance, like like he was a, a, a pipe or something. But um, yeah, because like Colson has it, so oh does uh, um, Mac gets it. Like it's like you guys, it's not how this works. <laughs> but it was cool though. It was cool. I mean, yeah, I could see a really cool, like gritty, like you know how 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 Constantine was should have been. Yes. Honest, you know what I mean. Yes. Do that. Yeah. God, dude, there was some good stuff. I'll tell you some cool stuff about Constantine after the show. Yeah. I'll tell you why it was awesome. There you go, yes. <laughs> um, for uh, me, I think the easiest thing and the most interesting thing would be Moon Knight. Nice. Again, because when we're talking about TV, as much as I want to see powers all the time, it just eats a budget. It, it does. Just eats no, right. a budget. You're right. So with Moon Knight, we can have we can have less of a budget. Um, and you know, we've got the split personalities right. of Mark Spectre and it's it's Batman it, again. Exactly. It's, it's it's a version of Batman that that can work. It's very true, um, and it and it lends itself to good TV because you're like you said this this character has multiple personalities. Yeah, like how cool you get the right writer for this. Oh yeah, dude, it would be almost. I think it'd be groundbreaking mm -hmm. if they could write it that. And way. And the way you do it is like. The casual fan doesn't know that Mark Spector exactly. has. So, like, we're kind of building to the end, and maybe it's even a mid-season thing where where the viewer realizes, like, oh crap, like, like this, all of these guys are different. Are, are, are Mark? He's you know? Mark, yeah. Because um, there's a, I can't remember all their names. One's a cab driver. One's kind of the playboy. Yeah. And then one's kind of the adventurer. That's right. So, um, yeah, yeah I a, would be so on board with the Moon Knight, dude. That yeah. would be. Friggin' awesome, yeah. dude. Could look cool, you know, just good fighting. Like, yeah. that's why Daredevil works, too, is we get some good fighting. Oh, yeah. You know, amazing well, sure. fighting. Yeah. Um, and something else I'd like to see in DC, and it, and it couldn't be a a show unless they were just doing, like, miniseries, but I like, I always talk about the Elseworlds. I'd like to see those Elseworlds stories done where they're kind of contained. Maybe they're three episodes yeah. on their app, and each episode's an hour long that or something. That's so cool. You know, and you do... Red Sun, the, sure. the Superman that lands in Russia as opposed to Smallville, yeah. Kansas. I get Gotham by Gaslight, Gaslight which is just uh, a fan favorite. Cri yeah, Crimson Mist, um, just which was the Bat Pirate. The Bat. I want to see that. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that was from the Return of Bruce Wayne, where he's kind of uh, jumping through time. Yeah, he's like back in caveman times. He's in Victorian times. He's in uh, he's in like um, what, what 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 time frame would you call a Crucible? The story. Uh, like Victorian? That's, I don't know if that's Victorian. You know, like where the witch, the same yeah, witch yeah, trials, for sure. whatever you call that time. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But yeah, he's like there as like a, as like one of those proctors. Oh, jeez. Yeah, oh, it's, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> this just know. gives me Pirate Joker and I wanted that. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You know, who, did, who didn't want that, you know? Um, yeah, mean, th th there's, some, there's some shows to be done. I think what Netflix is doing and I think what they need to focus on yeah. to, since they're losing all this good content is, you know, they did the Umbrella Academy, there which is excellent. That's what I've heard. Uh, apparently, they bought Extreme Studios, or they're going to buy Extreme Studios, which, that's Rob Liefeld's uh, oh, okay. uh, studios, and it's like, none of those characters so are... So we're going to get a major X show? Uh, no, because that's still Marvel. That's still Marvel, yeah. Oh, that, dang! He, he, sold, he sold Major oh, X to Marvel. no. Um, that's but a bummer. it's like Brigade and Youngblood and, oh, and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 you remember those? I yeah. do. I from, sure do. From, from the old Image days. That's right. Um, but yeah, they should buy up some more of these image yeah. titles and just do these contained seasons. There you go. Because uh, Umbrella Academy was a breath of fresh air. Really? It was a breath of fresh air. Was you haven't good. watched it yet. I have not oh, seen it. Oh, it is totally your type of show. Yes. You have to watch it. Okay. You, you will love it. It's, okay. it's weird in the right ways. And, you know, it's based off Gerard Way's uh, comic book, The Umbrella Academy, which I didn't care for as much. I didn't feel like the characters had any voices. Um, like if somebody was reading me the comic book, I wouldn't be able to to discern who was who. Sure. Um, but the actors in this were excellent, okay. and they just really fleshed it out. Ellen Page steals the show for really? me. She's so good in there. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was just it was it's a strong show. It's really strong, and it's nice to kind of see superheroes in a different light. That's what I'm saying. So this is going to be the breath of fresh air that gets us through the fatigue. Yes. The yes. Stuff like is them like doing the stuff yes. you're talking about. Yeah. Right here. Like there's no reason we don't have we don't have a crow uh, a new movie or a show. 
Right. And I'm not talking Stairway to Heaven, okay? <laughs> I'm talking a James O'Barr. And even James O'Barr is weird. So somebody who can respect James O'Barr but then has, has a notion for t- good storytelling. There you go. Because the Eric Draven story is good, but there's, there's only so, much, so many ways you can tell that. And it's one way. And, and I like it. the idea of the crow passing on sure. to people and everything, but yeah. they just never did it. And in this world of flipping genders, I think that at some point we need to have a female crow. Which, why not? Yeah. Like, you're telling me that, uh, uh, what was the girl, what was Eric's, uh, fiance? Oh, Shelly. Shelly. Good yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. Tell me Shelly doesn't deserve some vengeance. Yeah, right. You know? Like, like, why did Eric get resurrected? You know? That's very true. <laughs> you know? Like, if anybody deserved vengeance, it was Shelly who That's was raped true. and murdered. Yeah. So, I think, and your, your tagline is, hell hath no fury. Yeah. You know? There so, you know, like, that's kind there of, you know, that, that, it writes itself yes, much it better than the guy one does. Yeah, it really you know? does. Um... So yeah, those those are some show ideas I think that we could have, and those are some uh, just some of the reasons that we're kind of tapping out on television yes. right now. I'm literally yes. about to cancel my cable because I'm just like done watching superhero TV yeah. shows. It is. I never thought it. I never say that or yeah. heard you say that. I know, man. But it's it's true. Like the last year, we've gotten like a preacher show. The last few years, we've gotten yeah. a preacher show, which was um, a breath of fresh air. Which was good Different. for a little yeah. bit. Yep. Yeah. Um, when, uh, when yeah, I didn't watch season two. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and again, like I, Walking I Dead. Walking Dead. I mean, there are ways to, to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. to get us back in the game. But as far as DC and Marvel, I mean, we'll just see what the Disney streaming service gives us, man. I, 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 that does have me excited because Kevin Feige is kind of kind of uh, overseeing that as well. Sure. So we stand a very real chance of getting. Some TV shows that are MCU quality, quality, very true, and that excites me. I am just looking me. forward to the what if. Yes, oh my that gosh, is animated what, I'm what if. To the most. Yeah, I'm I'm very into that. And then remember, we also have Amazon Prime's coming out with the boys, which That's is true. which yeah. is a an interesting kind of dark story. The comic book is very sexual. They treat women very terribly. The heroes in this world are, are awful. Um, I hope it's not as sexually violent as the sure. comic is because it just I, does I nothing for me. I do the comic book, um, mm-hmm. not for those reasons. Yeah, um, the, that's it. In spite of those reasons, the bones of the story are great. Right, for sure. It's it's a it's a cool way to spin the superhero. Yes, you know, um, it's it's almost watch many in a way. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, but. Billy Butcher is just such an awesome Great character. character. I mean, Mother's Milk, Huey. Yeah. Like, uh, the French female. Frenchie, the female. Oh, <laughs> even the bad guys. <laughs> uh, are you know, just. Yeah, the, the seven. You the know? seven yeah. are just. It, it, it's evil Avengers if they were. Evil Justice League. Justice League, yeah, rather. Yeah. And, um, if they were just. If they had these superpowers and they were. They had the mind of a normal person. Yeah. You would think or you were. Or a degenerate person. Yeah. Well, think about it. You're a god. Yeah, you your mind would basically go to that. Like I can do whatever I want. Yeah, no one's gonna stop me. Yeah. And you would do this. Yeah, it's uh, that one's gonna be tough. We'll probably have to break that down a yeah, little bit so. when it comes out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, that has been our show for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you like what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell your friends. Give us a like. Leave us a review. Uh, check us out on Instagram mm-hmm. at REC Comics. Send us a DM if there's something you'd like us to talk about or something you think we missed and that yeah. we should bring up. Um, we're, we're open to show ideas and, uh, and having a, a dialogue with you guys. Eric, what did you learn today? I need a Moon Knight TV show. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Now that you said that, like I'm like, wow. I can actually see it in my head. Yeah. I need it. I need to uh, to quit having an abusive relationship with with uh, uh, comic book television, <laughs> and you know when, when a comic's bad, I give it six issues okay, and then I move on. I have yet to do that with television, sure. and I need to learn. Okay, I need to learn, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I have been Roman Chavez, Eric Icarus, and, and we will catch you next time.